Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing five tips on how to get more views on your TikTok videos. Before we get into the tips, if you don't know me, I'm Rebecca Eloisa. Like you know, I am the owner and CEO of Kona Rise Digital Marketing Agency, where we work with a bunch of amazing content creators and basically help them amplify their message across social media. Now, TikTok specifically has a special place in my heart, in me. Corazon. This year, I got one of my clients from a couple thousand views to over 4 million views consistently every single month. And I was like, yay. And then another one of my clients, I got him from absolutely zero followers up to 100,000 plus followers in about two months. Being transparent, they had an existing following on other platforms. But example number three is myself got the receipts. <laughs> I don't really have followers on other platforms, at least not today. <laughs> but I've gotten videos over a million views, over 2 million views on my little old TikTok account. And I actually went from zero to about 40,000 followers in about two weeks or so when I was quarantined with you know what. Step numero uno is audience. Who is your audience? Now, Typical marketing, what you learn in the little textbooks is demographic information. That's like where do they live, their ages, ethnicity, education level, all those demographics. But what I'm gonna teach you today is to listen to their pain points. What keeps them up at night? What is constantly swirling in their head? What are their goals, their passions, their dreams? What do they wanna learn? What videos do they watch on YouTube? All of those things. If you're starting your account at zero, I'm just gonna say, you can one, either know exactly like who, what kind of audience you'd like to target and narrow them down and create content for them. Or you can just start posting a bunch of random stuff and see what sticks. The faster you post a lot of content, the faster you're gonna learn and the faster you're gonna get all, some, all your like really good data. So you can then analyze the data and then make decisions from there on what type of content you're gonna post. So let's do an example. Let's say you have a 15 year old kid. Okay, puberty, that's the first thing that comes to mind, okay? 15 year old kid, is it a boy or a girl? Because they're very different. Are they woke? Are they not woke? Again, very different. Let's look at moms. A lot of people think, oh, moms are all the same. They care about the same things. Maybe they care about a lot of the same things, but not every single thing. So let's look at a vegan mom who's living in Hawaii with five kids. And then let's say we're looking at a primal mom who's living in Minnesota with three kids. Very different needs, very different pain points and desires. Okay, so you wanna get specific. When I talk to my clients and I say, how old is your, your ideal customer? And they give me a range of like, oh, they're 20 to 30 year olds. My first thing is like, no, like a 20 year old is very different than a 29 year old. A 25 year old is very different than someone who's almost 30. Okay, so we need to know exactly who they are and how old they are, what their interests are and what their pain points are. And from there, you can then create content. So for example, with one of my amazing clients, Stefan Speaks, his audience, without giving away everything, just the most obvious thing is that they are into relationships. He's a certified relationship coach and he helps with those things. So people who are working on relationships, are they single people? Are they married people? Because those two are very different. And then I then, we then create content to help address those, their different pain points. And then one of my other clients, he teaches all about money and specifically like personal finance, wealth build, building, legacy building while doing it debt free. So someone who is committed to building wealth debt-free versus someone who's open to using lines of credit. These are very different people. So when looking at the type of content you wanna make for TikTok, you have to be very specific on who your audience is. Don't be discouraged if you don't know who they are right now. I highly recommend just making content that's interesting to you or making content that surrounds um, where you want to go and where you'd like to be in like the next six months, 12 months. And then eventually you're gonna see what sticks and what they care about. The amazing thing is, is that once you know what they care about, then you can address their needs and they will keep coming back to get their needs addressed. <laughs> 
Second thing, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever listened to on a podcast when it comes to content creation is how to go viral or basically how to make content that strikes a chord, that slaps, and that is to mix the expected with the unexpected. Mix what people know about with what they don't know about. I heard Upton say this on the Lost Creator podcast and it's stuck with me since. For example, this is along the lines of what Upton said in the interview, but take Starbucks. Everybody knows what Starbucks is, but then maybe like there's a four story Starbucks in Dubai. So say he does a video on vlogging or visiting this four story like luxury Starbucks in Dubai. The thing that is expected and common is the Starbucks. They have Starbucks all over the world. They have it in Bakersfield, California. <laughs> they have it in Dallas. They have it in New York, Miami. They have them everywhere. But the more unexpected thing that's a little bit unorthodox is like a four-story Starbucks or a luxury Starbucks or a Starbucks that has an ATM with gold bars. So that mixing what's common with the uncommon gives your video that wow factor and especially on tiktok that's why some things will pop off because they're hilarious it'll be something common that you mix with the uncommon also when it comes to titles for your content is super important you want to make sure that it is I don't want to say controversial. You want to make sure it grabs their attention. Now, what grabs people's attention is like I mentioned, mixing the orthodox with the unorthodox. Two is something that's more controversial uh, and unexpected. Three is if you're going to give and provide some type of value. Finally, when it comes to creating content, keep it brief. Brevity is everything. Okay, don't ramble. Always try to say less than what you were already like planning on saying. Next is be brief. Assume that your audience has the attention span of a third grader and there's a bunch of other stuff happening around them. That could also take their attention because the truth is, especially TikTok, the attention span is like 0. 0.00002 seconds. Catch the attention with the hook and then deliver the content. It'll take practice, but you guys, I'm sure, will get better at it. You can also leave your questions down below in the comment section, or you can book a consultation call with me and we can create a whole digital strategy for your brand. Number three, I want to touch on camera, gear, and editing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're not a Gen Z or a young millennial, you probably don't know, no offense, <laughs> You probably don't know that TikTok is way, way less formal than the other social media platforms, excluding Twitter, excluding Clubhouse. People get ratchet on Clubhouse, but they also get ratchet on TikTok. <laughs> Basically, you can use your phone. You don't need fancy edits. You just film on your phone. You can edit through the app, which is always best using the app's programs. The most important thing is, is can they see you and can they hear you? And sometimes even making your videos intentionally less polished even helps. So you may see some creators who are, are amazing like videographers and editors on YouTube, but then on TikTok, they may be like holding like an external mic. This is a little lip liner, but let me say they're holding an external mic using a camera phone versus like their super fancy cameras that they are usually using for YouTube. So keep that in mind. A lot of people um, sometimes go overboard with the edits and stuff over there and the videos don't perform as well. I've honestly, I've done both with every single one of my clients. We've done the super high end fancy edits and then we've done like the very native looking organic videos. Okie dokie guys, we're on to number four and let's speed it up a little bit. <laughs> Use the tools that TikTok provides. So that means when it comes to titles, open captions, any kind of music that you add, and also like the caption that goes like below the video explaining it, and hashtags. So make sure you use all of those options that TikTok provides versus like creating that stuff in editing, like in like pre-production. Um, using like Premiere or iMovie or one of those editing softwares, like I highly recommend using everything that TikTok offers because TikTok is basically a search engine like a lot of other social media platforms. And what's gonna happen is 
that they're going to use all of that info and words to basically categorize your video. So if you're trying to talk to a mom who eats a primal diet and you're talking about liver <laughs> and its benefits to eating liver, then instead of going in and writing that out like in some kind of other software when it comes to captioning a video, highly recommend using TikTok's like auto-generate captions, fixing any errors that are there because when the word primal comes up or like benefits of liver, then that's how your video is going to be categorized and shown to people that are actually searching that thing. Number five is something that low-key pisses me off. <laughs> Okay, when something, you're creating content and you're posting, right? And then you have a video that gets some momentum. So say maybe you've been only getting like 15 views on your videos and then you get one that gets like, I don't know, like 1500 views all of a sudden. And you're like, yay, oh my gosh, I'm starting to go viral. Or even if you have a video that hits like over a mil, people do this, okay? They have some success. And then the next video they post is about something completely unrelated. Don't be that person, okay? At least if you're trying to grow. If you're trying to grow on social media, especially on TikTok, then if something hits, if there's a video and it's just going off in a good way, then you want to create as much content as you can on that same exact freaking topic, okay? You want to kill that topic in a good way. Like, just keep on posting. I'm going to give an example of this. I saw it on YouTube. So there's this creator... The video basically talked about how she went from very difficult to manage, like icky hair, to now the hair of her dreams, like looking like Rapunzel, but curly. And she doesn't get tangles, okay? Magic. <laughs> that video blew up and that came up on my, my feed. And so when I went to go look at all her other content, hoping to see like other curly hair videos, I only saw videos about historic fashion and how to sew your own what are those thingies called? Thingies that make you skinny. Those things that make corsets. Her videos were all about how to sew corsets and how to dress like a historical woman from like the 1800s, okay? And her most recent video though got tons of views, like probably like 100 times the amount of views she usually gets. Um, this curly hair video had it. So if she were my client, I would have said, bam, you found something that works. Girl, let's go make some more curly hair videos. Some people might not want to do that because they have already created content or they are like, oh, I want to be diverse in the stuff that people come to me for, which is great, but you're losing an opportunity. It's like point blank. You're missing an opportunity that you have. So highly recommend if something pops off a little bit, duplicate it, spin it slightly, make another one and duplicate, duplicate, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Okay. And it's the formula. You're not redoing the exact same video. But for example, this woman with the curly hair, she did an hour long video on how to grow your hair long and luscious. Um, she can do another one on how she styles it during the day. And then she can do another video on how she styles it at night. She can do another one on her favorite oils to use in her hair, her favorite hair products. Maybe throw back looking at old photos of her, comparing them to now. So there's so many topics that you can do. Um, but the good thing is that when you see something that kind of hits, then you're able to recreate it and recreate it. And you have the formula for what works with your audience and on your TikTok account. That, my friends, is how you get more views. All right, just to wrap everything up, these are all the tips and tricks that I share with my own social media managers in my team. And so you guys basically got like a tiny, like mini crash course in what I usually teach my team. If you're interested in having me dissect your own social media profiles and accounts and teach you how to really like blow them up in a good way, click the link in my description below for a consultation. Go ahead and also give me a like, drop any questions in the comments below and follow me over on Instagram at Rebecca Eloisa. Also, this is part of a series on how to grow on social media. So make sure you check that out, guys. All right, see ya. Thank you.